the guy I'm interviewing tonight is one of these guys in the picture. Uncle Drew, Too Tall, MKG. Guten Tag, depending on if you're watching this in the morning, I'm assuming, right? In Deutschland. Uh, this is Basketball Diary. I'm Wu. I got Justin Sears again. Uh, he has returned after a year hiatus yeah. of uh, our last interview. Um, a little quick brief. Uh, in uh, less than 72 hours, he's going to be out of the U.S. and he's going to be in Germany. Uh, so, got a few minutes. We're catching up with him. We're shooting this. No plans. There's no paper. Nothing. <laughs> Nothing. Oh, we're just going straight into our topics. All right, let's not make any mistakes. Let's not make any mistakes. No, actually, mistakes do happen, and they're actually great, you know? <laughs> That's a first. Um, how are you doing? Oh, I'm good, you know? Uh, doing, enjoying my last uh, couple hours in uh, the States and everything. Uh, it's a little daunting. Yeah. I start the new chapter of my life and uh, playing basketball in Germany. All right, so... fun. Four years, Ivy League, two-player year award, uh, one NCAA championship victory, which is like monumental at Yale. Yeah. I mean, historical. Yeah. Uh, first left, team to do it. Yeah, first team to do it. You guys got a huge anchor, Nick, Brandon, yourself. Yeah. Like, you know, heavy on the rebounding, yep. everything. Uh, tell me about what's what happened this last season. Uh, whew. This season was... Uh a marathon uh, just going into the season of uh, our last season uh, we want to win a uh, win the Ivy League title and go to the tournament and uh, we did exactly that um, Won 13 won in league play it was a uh, a lot harder than it sounded yeah it was tough and uh, this was the last uh, year the Ivy League had the uh, before had, the four the 14 playoffs yeah, so the Ivy League is the only uh, conference that doesn't have a, a conference uh, playoff tournament and everything so uh -huh. this is the last year they did it and so uh, we came out victorious and we went on to the tournament to play Baylor, and uh, that was uh, it was basketball heaven in the NCAA. <laughs> you couldn't go anywhere without um, a camera, a microphone, or anyone asking for an autograph in your face. And, uh, coming from Yale, um, athletics isn't uh, number one on the priority list, so it was nice to be a superstar yeah. for once and just have the the bright lights on uh, that whole week. I I want to ask you more about the NCAA situation in a second, yeah. but uh, before that. When you got to Yale freshman year, you yeah. finished now, now you can really answer this. Like, what was your expectation going into Yale as a freshman, right? Yeah. And now you came out of it, like, wow. Was it like, whoa, beyond, I took advantage of what I have and more? Or it was like neutral or oh, I should have done this? So wow. give me a little bit of that. Ooh, I don't want to like bore the viewers and everything, but going into Yale, um then I, I wasn't sure if I was ready academically for it. It's the top academic institution in the world. And then basketball-wise, I did not know I, I developed like that. But um, it was a life-changing experience. I grew as a basketball player, as an individual, and uh, just the people I've met. Um, everyone there, they're motivated, they're passionate, and uh, it rubs off on you. And so whatever endeavor I take from now on, like I, I have that, uh, that vigor to, to give it my all. Right. And um, just on the basketball side of things, um, it was a great experience. Um, coach Jones is a great coach, and I'm happy to get him that uh, the Ivy League uh, title finally. But um, he uh, he's great just because he challenges his players and everything. And like we played, we played Duke, we played yeah. Duke twice. Yeah. Um, we played uh, at Iowa State. We played UConn. We played like a great schedule. And you're not playing cupcakes all the time. Right. But at the same time, um, he he has a lot of good teaching points and everything. So when uh, we we play the Ivy League teams, uh, those those big games we played in early in the season, it, it's, it's a breeze now. We've been through, we've been through hell before. So um, just playing for Coach Jones was just amazing. And then um, on the other side of things, the academics and the, the social life, it, it, was, it was fun. You know, I've done trips everywhere from Miami, we went to Australia, uh, just meeting friends in New York and just the, the culture of people, or the group of people I know now, it, it's vast. I can go into any city in pretty much the world and I, I'll know someone at least who vaguely from uh, Yale and we'll meet up, have lunch, coffee, do whatever. So just the Ivy League experience was amazing. All right, so you guys win the Ivy League. Yeah. You go into the NCAA tournament. 
you get this first victory ever, yeah. ever, you know, in New England, yeah. in New England, home court, yeah. you play the mighty Duke twice this year. Mm -hmm. uh, what was that like, that whole experience? It was crazy. Um, you get that first win, and um, I don't want to say we didn't know how to act, but like I really just did not know what was happening. It was just so fast, and everyone was in your face congratulating you. It was a wave of emotions, happy, just that you had a game in literally two days. And uh, at that, it was Duke. So um, a lot of teams, when they get to the tournament, they're happy. So right. if you win a game, you're even more happy. But like we, we weren't satisfied. We wanted to get revenge and everything. And we weren't, we weren't scared, we weren't daunted by the, the prospect of playing Duke again. And uh, going into that game, it looked like it. We went down 27, and um, we went in the locker room, and uh, the seniors, we all looked at each other. It was just like, this is our last, this is our last game. This possibly could be our last game, so like, let's just leave it out on the floor. And, uh, we, we did exactly that. We, we got within two or three points. and uh, Unfortunately, that's as close as we got, but uh, it, it was a lot of fun to, to play in that game. And, like, a good three or four NBA players on that on that Duke team. Wow, um, I I heard about something about you bringing food and you were not to bring food in. Oh, what was that story? Can, can give yeah. us a little more about what happened. Yeah, so the NCAA tournament, uh, it was crazy just because there's so many advertisements. I think sponsored by Powerade, uh, Axe, all kinds of things. I can't even think of the things they're sponsored by. So um, unfortunately, I do not eat breakfast. It's something I, I just can't do. And so um, we had an early morning game. Yeah, we had an early game. The game was like, I want to say 12 or 1 o'clock. I didn't eat breakfast. So I stopped at Subway right before uh, the team bus. And uh, I'm watching the game before us. It was Wichita and I want to say Miami. I can't remember exactly. So right. I had my sandwich. And I'm about to walk onto the, uh, the floor because we could watch the game before. And uh, the security guard kind of like grabs the sandwich out of my hand. He's like, whoa, you can't bring this out here. I'm just like, what? It's just a sandwich. And it was, it was a Subway sandwich. And Subway, unfortunately, is not a sponsor of the NCAA. And so me going into that game with a, a Subway bag with the Subway logo all over the bag and everything, Lord knows if a camera were to put it on me, see Justin yeah. Sears eating a Subway sandwich. That, that's not allowed. So uh, fortunately, uh, the guy gave my sandwich back, even though it was kind of messed up. But <laughs> yeah. Just for just real quick for the viewers, if you've never been to an NCAA game, they black out everything. The courts are brand new, so they played at Providence College, right? Yep. Uh, but the court does not belong to Providence College. It's all NCAA courts. Everything is blacked out. Everything. Yeah. Everything. So that was kind of interesting. Like. Yeah, that was crazy. So we played at Providence. I want to say two or three times before, yeah. and nice stadium and everything. But like you would have not known it was Providence's gym. No. NCAA, NCAA logo was everything, court was new, stickers everywhere. Um, going through all the locker rooms and stuff, they covered all the Providence stuff. So, like, if it was my first time going to that gym, I would have known it was Providence. But, uh, fortunately, uh, we've had some good games against Providence in there, so we were able to uh, carry that, that You had the career high there. Yeah. Was um, that your that, – that was just – my still sophomore your, year. That was had, still your career high, right? Yep. So my career <laughs> high, 30, 31. I, I had a good meal before the game. I think that's why. All right. So you finish your career, right? Yeah. Most people, uh, some, most people think, you know, obviously, hey, I'm going to train. I'm going away to camp. Other guys are actually in school. You're part of that group yeah. that you're in school until like pretty much the final days, right? Yep. Until May. Um, there was a couple of other players from higher programs in the ACC. They were still in school too. Yeah. Um, take take me through your like selecting an agent process and then figuring out what's your best fit. Yeah. So for all the players that don't know who are going to pursue the professional route, um, your agents uh, it's a big part. You uh, make sure you, you get on the team and everything. And that was a a very very stressful process um, going through the year. Everyone and their mother was contacting me, whether it be. Facebook, email, mail, any any way you can get my number, contact me. I was contacted through the year. And um, the second um, that Duke game was over, my phone was blowing up with uh, people requesting to be my agent and everything. And unfortunately, uh, it was a bit tougher for me. I had to focus on uh, schoolwork. I had my thesis due and everything. So I, I'm, I'm blessed to have two parents who uh, took care of the process for me. But uh, we went through that process, interviewed a lot of agents, and selected one. And uh, from there, it was uh, showcases, Portsmouth, played in Final Four weekend at the All-Star Game. 
And then besides that, when I wasn't doing that and traveling around, I was working on my thesis paper. So I, it was it was a crazy crazy spring semester. What's your who's your agent and which agency? Uh, so I'm represented by Sam Cipriano and Keith Creer of uh, Edge Sports International. And they're located in Chicago. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay, so that happened, and then early, like a few months ago, um, you had options to go to camps or you know auditions, yeah. blah blah blah. Um, what what was your reason of going or not going? What was that? Yeah, so I did a little workouts with uh, Boston and Philly, but uh, I was really uh, didn't really do too many workouts. Didn't didn't do NBA summer league. Kind of, um, and unfortunately, because I'm, I'm at Yale, it's a little bit tougher academically. Right. I had to focus on my schoolwork and everything, so I wasn't able to work out during that time period as much as I would like. And uh, instead of going uh, to all these uh, camps and uh, playing and going to summer league, I wanted to you know sit down, enjoy my last. Uh, last couple months with my parents and everything, but most importantly, just work out and develop my game. And it's, it's amazing. This is the first time in, in my career where I don't have to uh, do a two-hour workout and run right to the library to uh, do a paper or read a book. Now, because now, Ma Maldo from Columbia had the same situation. Exactly. He had interviews lined up for him for NBA teams, and he was in school. He couldn't literally leave. It's Yeah, it's tough. And, uh, Academics is number one and everything over there. So um, while some guys, they uh, they can take online classes or they can uh, just, suck, just suck their academic uh, uh, career, they, uh, we have to focus on that and get finished. And uh, the reason I came to Yale was to get that, get that degree. And uh, fortunately, I made it out. On Tuesday, you fly away. Yep. Uh, you are going to? Germany. So I'll be playing for uh, the Gießen 46ers in uh, the BBL. Okay. How excited is that? I'm, I'm pumped. It's a, it's a new lifestyle. Uh, I've heard a lot of the fans have already reached out to me. They're, they're pumped. They're excited. They sell out a lot of the games and everything. You know, I get to wear red. Those are my high school colors. So okay. I'm, I'm happy I can bring back uh, my red socks again. How big is the city and the town? Uh, it's a small city, but there's a university of about 28,000 people. They have a, a couple wow. McDonald's, a Subway, Burger King, and that's as much as I know, but it sounds like it's a westernized place. I'm sure it's going to be good beer and, and good people over there. <laughs> McDonald's and Burger King. <laughs> McDonald's yeah. and Burger King. Um, did you have any other options that you wanted to go, that you could have gone to, like a different city, a different country? Um, no, that was actually my first offer. So okay. it was really, really early. But uh, I spoke to the coach multiple times, spoke to uh, the GM of the team, and uh it was just a great situation for me and everything. Uh, they they want to help me develop. We're gonna play small ball over there, so I can yeah. develop my perimeter skills. But at the same time, I get to uh, still uh, do what I'm best at and just be a big guy up there and uh, be a dominating uh, defensive force and blocking shots. And that's pretty that's pretty exciting. Um, yeah. So your other teammates just recently got signed too, right? Yeah. Yeah. Brandon is going to Germany. Yeah, I'm not sure of the team, but he's only going to be two hours from me. I'm okay, he's say. two hours. He's one of the other seniors. Um, Armani just got the job. He's in Belgium, yep. right? He's in Belgium. Uh, and what about Nick? Uh, yeah, so Nick, uh, I was talking with him the other day. So he was saying he's trying to do a... a Nick, I'm sorry if you see this interview. I get the details wrong. But uh, he's uh, going to play with this team. And they're doing a, a tour through Germany. In mid-August. He's gonna play in Germany? Yeah so I guess they assemble a team of players and they go all through Germany and they, they play games and stuff. And I'm sure he can get a contract from there. I, I don't know what team would want Nick on their team. He shot 40% from three so yeah. That's pretty dope. So there's a lot of German stories right now. There's mm -hmm. another German story that you want to tell the viewers about. One of your teammates. Oh yeah. Um, what, what, I'm not gonna say anymore. Why yeah. don't you tell? Yeah, um, Makai Mason, the star of uh, the NCAA tournament with his 30-point uh, outburst. Uh, versus Baylor, right? Yep, versus Baylor. Uh, the, the new white hope that we, that's what we <laughs> like to call him. But um, yeah, he, uh, he killed it. And um, he was doing work, uh, workouts and stuff. And then uh, his father asked me about uh, how I was doing um, with the professional route. So my mom's from England, so I have dual citizenship. So that's going to help me out later out in the, the process of my uh, basketball career, but um, uh, I told Makai about that, and uh, he was like, oh, okay, I have some family from Germany, and uh, a couple days later, he comes back, he's like, I'm talking to the national team coach to try and help Makai get citizenship, 
and a couple days later, probably I want to say 10 days elapsed, the guy's uh, getting ready to ship off to Germany to play for the national team and everything. So uh, best of luck to him. I, I hear he's killing it out there. I know the German people are going to love uh, his fire and intensity out there. Um, and w w future of Yale, yeah. what's your opinion? You've seen, you seen and met a couple of the new guys. Yeah. Um, predictions. Uh, yeah, so anything's possible now. The, uh, the Ivy League tournament is now upon us. This will be the first year, and uh, Harvard's Harvard. They uh, they have a really good recruiting class, and they can play defense, and Coach Amaker's doing good things there, and Princeton, they're hungry. They have the same situation as us previously where they came in second, and now they they have a bunch of seniors here trying to uh, go out on top. But uh, I think uh, I think we're going to be right there in the mix. Coach Jones always, always finishes top four in the league. You know, we need to be top four to make the tournament, and from there, anything can happen. So, okay, so you got Harvard, Yale. Yeah. What's the other two? Princeton. Princeton. And then that fourth team could, it could be anyone. It could be Dartmouth, could be Columbia, could be Penn. Okay. All right. Now you finish your college career. Yeah. Uh, you're done with that. You're done with a lot of other things that sometimes it's not really important, but. Give some real good advice for people who are watching this, playing hoops, whether they want to go to, no, not whether, but they're going to the Ivy League yeah. or they're going to a high academic school and what to, how to handle themselves during the recruiting process when they're going into, you know, before they go to college. Like, should they believe the hype? I mean, you're not yeah. one of the guys who yeah. are, you yeah. know, uh, part of the, whole entire yeah. you know poll stuff so I, yeah. I gather you you have some experience with that yeah I guess any advice for guys looking at um the Ivy League I guess is um like you said just like don't buy into the hype and just uh one you have to have good grades I hope you have that so if you have good grades you'll be set but from there like don't believe in the hype the rankings the polls and everything um I never was ranked coming out of uh, high school and wasn't top 100 wasn't top 150 Makai wasn't ranked coming out of uh, high school Brandon wasn't ranked and Brandon, he set the NCAA record for most uh, field goals in a row at like 31, oh, yeah. 32. Yeah. Makai dropped a 30 piece on a, a, t a high major team in the NCAA tournament with the whole country watching. And then I'm right. the two time player of the year. I've had success and now I'm going on to a professional career. So I'm just, just always work, always compete, and don't like, don't, social media and everything is, is, is trash. Don't listen to what people are talking about. Just keep working on your craft and your moment will come. Your opportunity will come. Last, last thing I want to just cover is uh, Jersey, this year's draft. Yeah. I mean, you got Wade, DeAndre, Malachi. Who else? Do we miss one more? There's one more. One more. Right. One more guy. Who's on? Let's see. This is why we, we need to. Uh, this is the mistake. We don't have. We don't have like our detail and resources. Yeah. But uh. What's up? What, is it in the water? Is it like, I mean, I, I mean, I try to tell everyone like this is this. If you're trying to play basketball, New Jersey's the place to be, you know, the Players Club, Sports U, just like in, in St. Benedict's and St. Patrick's, like all these schools are in Roosevelt Catholic. Now they have players as well. Um, it's a small state in um, New York. They're sending their players over here as well. You know? I don't know. It, ha it has to be the water guys just come out here and we play hard and everything. You know? It's such a small state where I can go 10 minutes down the road and get a good pickup game with a, a lot of uh, Division One guys and everything. So I couldn't tell you, but we have, we have good basketball and it, it's, it's the results are showing with the NBA draft. Yeah, and, and really showing, yeah. really showing. Uh, anything you're going to miss when you leave here? <sighs> three things. If you could take three things on an island, what would they be? Oh, wow. Taco Bell would be one. Okay. Just, just, Taco Parker Bell restaurant right there. Taco Bell, um, my bike. I love my bike. I have to buy a bike. Okay. Oh, yeah. My bike got stolen in uh, New Haven, so I miss that. So Taco Bell, my bike, and my third thing. Whew. Well, I don't know my T-shirt collection. I have a really good T-shirt collection of graphic tees. Oh yes, the it's, connoisseur. It's, yes, yes. I have some very. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Just t-shirts that are out there, and uh, a lot of my teammates hate me for that, but uh, they're, they're going to miss my crazy t-shirt collection. Ah, uh, <laughs> Justin, thank you. Yes, thanks, Lou. <laughs>
Ah, 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 ah,